Comrades, I am Admiral Andre and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. With the conclusion of our very successful, although not uneventful, uh, Apollo Moon mission, I think it's time to do a flyby of Eve, so Apollo Venus essentially. Now, comrades, in this case, of course, we have to wait for the window to open to Eve, so I will fast forward 322 days. But first, of course, we have to have a look at the whole design and the, uh, the plan, basically. If we don't have a plan, we don't know where we're going. So, comrades, we'll jump into that and I will meet you in the VAB for some final modifications to our Saturn V. Now, comrades, let's have a look. This is, of course, Wikipedia again. This shows the outline of the manned Venus flyby mission. Now, we can see here NASA considered a manned flyby of Venus in the mid-1960s as part of the Apollo Applications Program. Then, this particular launch that we are going to do now would have taken place in 1973. Can you believe it? Still, it's what now, 40 years, 40 plus years later and we haven't been near to Venus, or at least we haven't even had a manned mission beyond the moon. Very disappointing, really. Anyway, so it says here the S4B stage would have been a wet workshop, so essentially the interior of the fuel tanks would be filled with living quarters after the fuel is spent, of course. However, in our case, we can't do that. That is not an option in Kerbal Space Program, so I'm going to be using a separate lab module, I think, or maybe a hitchhiker container. We'll have to see. The S will be then be filled with fuel and so on. Once the burn is complete, any remaining fuel was vented into space and then the tank could be used as a living space. That must be quite something. I would be so concerned about fumes or chemicals or something, but I suppose once it's used up, it would just be an empty tank. Hmm. Of course, it would have to be airtight. Anyway, uh, let's have a look. Uh, this shows quite a lot of information here. Service propulsion system would be replaced by two LM descent propulsion system engines. Hmm, let's have a look at what this is saying. Only so much equipment, hydrogen, da, 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 da. these sorts would replace an, 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 an interstage known as the spacecraft LM adapter. We'll have a look at that. To maximize the amount of space available in this area, the surface propulsion system would be replaced by two landing module descent propulsion system engines. Smaller engine bells which would lie within the service module instead of extending out into the SLA area. So, in other words, in our case, terrier engines then. This is surprising. I did not know this. There's a video on YouTube of this mission, surprisingly not with Kerbal Space Program, but with uh, the Orbiter Simulator. And uh, so shout out to, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name or her name, I have no idea, Risferino uh, Orbiter uh, Simulator thing. Anyway, I can't even remember the full name now, but if you search for this mission, Risferino, something like that, you'll find this excellent video. And in that case, there was only the SPS, so we could be improving on that then. I suppose in Orbiter, there's not so many options for sort of micromanaging the parts. Unlike the Apollo lunar missions, the CSM would perform its transposition and docking with the S4B stage before the burn to leave Earth, which makes sense, comrades, because after all, you don't want to run into the problem that we had now in the Apollo mission of the Moon, where we could not dock successfully. If they burn to Venus and then can't dock successfully, it's a, an absolute disaster. So you have to do that before the burn. Then you obviously will uh, do the burn sort of with the astronauts pointing backwards. So that's why they call it an eyeballs out burn, because it could knock your eyeballs out. But obviously it wouldn't have that much thrust. So it's uh, not not literally. Let's see, all spacecraft needed to be operational and checked before leaving the parking orbit. Hmm. 
So what would it do? Let's try to recreate this as well. Atmospheric density. Uh, how do you measure that though? I wonder if it had something that it dropped into the atmosphere. Uh, chemical composition. Hmm. We'll just throw on our normal scientific equipment. Hmm. Data on the planet Mercury as well. In that video of the orbiter simulator, the uh, S4B tank actually went on to fly past Mercury. Now, in our case, I could probably not pull that off, so let's not even bother. Phase A, Phase B. So that's the actual mission. Uh, LM engines replacing the service propulsion engines, batteries to replace the fuel cells and other modifications, long range communication. We'll have to focus on that, otherwise we'll lose contact as well. And of course, a more ablator on our heat shield. Hmm. Flyby would be so high, the crew would only have a few hours for detailed study. Ah, one or more unmanned probe landers would separate from the craft and land on Venus. Good grief. Could we do that? Now, I have no idea what those landers would look like. But I'm sure we could. Let's have a look at this diagram. It's a bit small here. But uh, development steps. So I guess this would have been sort of the evolution of the whole thing. At the end, I don't know what those things are. Hmm, can't read the labels here, but it, it, where the landing module or the lunar module was, there's this sort of adapter with also, I suppose, living space or at least a tunnel to get into the tank there. But this will be our main living area. Bolo, hmm, SLA, that's just the thing that attaches the, uh, Landing module, lunar module. Hmm. So that's what they were saying. That's why they couldn't have a big SPS engine there with all of these adapter things there. Venus, okay, that's the same thing. Hmm. I saw this also, the TMK. This is a Russian flyby with the N1 rocket, Mars and Venus. We could possibly try that later. There's a whole story here as well. Using Apollo hardware to explore Venus and Mars. Hmm. Not sure what we can see here. I'm not sure what's happening here. Design. I don't know if this was the final design. Doesn't look like it. It's got some kind of an engine on the top there. So here it also says for Venus flybys, the SM could also remain unchanged. So the service module, but on a Mars flyby, it would have to change there. So we don't need to change that. What else could we see here? Hmm. The lab crew living area would nestle in a bowl-shaped recess in the aft skirt assembly. Okay, that's not going to help us much. Hmm. Looking for diagrams. Oh, well. A probe there. What's this one? Another article. Apollo ends at Venus. Uh, 1967 proposal. Post-Saturn rockets. I'm thinking this might be something else then. Or maybe not. Venus orbiter. Hmm. Final goal. Missions with... Uh, uh, Difficult to say here. Post-Saturn rockets. Nuclear-powered spaceships. But I guess this part is still the old uh, Saturn V. Uh, would launch here. This, I suppose, is the thing. Saturn V's S4B third stage would inject the CSM and the three astronauts and the th so many pounds MM. Now, what's an MM? Mission module. Suppose that's the interstage thing there that we saw. Uh, where was this now? Into 100 nautical mile circular parking orbit. So we saw this before. That's about 185 kilometers. So we can do that again. The stage would be restarted a few hours uh, to place itself and the payload into an elliptical orbit with a 70,000 mile apogee. 
Now I have to look up what 70,000 miles is in kilometers. So let me just have a look at that. That is 112,000 kilometers. Now this is probably way unnecessary for us, but we can keep this in mind. 112,000 kilometers. So what was the next step? 48 hour period. Hmm. Beyond expected Apollo Saturn 5 capacity. Shrugged off this shortfall, saying it was so small it would be in the noise level. Hmm. So it was like pushing this thing to its absolute limit. After the S4B shut down, the astronauts would attach their CSM from the spacecraft launch adapter. Turn it around. Let's just uh, hope this docking will go better this time. Which would occupy the volume where the lunar module was. They would then use the CSM to pull the MM free of the stage. Then transfer to the end to apply its twin solar arrays. Now, in this case, it seems like they're leaving the S4B behind. But the uh, video that I saw with the orbiter thing, here it is, there, uh, where's the name of this person? I should give credit where it's due. There you can see they kept the thing attached there. There, Risferino Orbiter Filmmaker. So this, I highly recommend you have a look at this channel. This has excellent Orbiter videos. Uh, so what do we do here? Do we actually keep the thing attached? There is, of course, anywhere you look, there's Kerbal equivalents as well. Let's just have a look. I think in our case we'll keep this attached. Because why would you then speak of a wet workshop thing on the Wikipedia? Because obviously there you're using the S4B as a living space, so you're not going to get rid of it. So that must be a different variant of the mission. Hmm. But we'll do this elliptical orbit, certainly. Let's just see here. Immediately we'll shut down the CSM. So yes, you can see here, this is a different kind of variant. It's almost like a small living module. Hmm, I wonder, would it have done this since... No, but why on earth would you have this wet workshop thing? Now we'll do this, this one, the standard one. Let me just have a look at some of the images again. There's another excellent one, I have to say. This shows the, how the tank would have been used for living space. Let's look at this image. So there we see, of course, the CSM with, uh, hmm, I suppose the smaller engines, definitely. Also looks like a smaller tank there, but we won't mess with that. Then there's the dish there. Interesting, so it sort of comes out there and then points to the side. That might be a bit difficult because, of course, we can't deploy things like that. It will have to fit in here. Then uh, this MM adapter thing here. And then, of course, inside the tank, you can see there's a recreation area, personal gym storage. Good grief. Well, they made use of the space. That's one thing. So, of course, we will keep this attached. Also then, if they speak about the eyeballs outburn, then of course we're still burning the S4B there. Now, what else do we want to see here? Propulsive energy stands out. I'm just having a look through this quickly. Hmm. I want to see what happens when they get to Venus. Of course, they deploy those probes. Launch escape system. Of course, we'll keep all of that normal. Here, the uh, spacecraft would pass approximately 3,000 miles from the surface of Venus. Of course, we will go much closer to Eve than that. We can't see anything from that far away. No, 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 no. Okay, so we're going to do this, comrades. I'm not sure about the probes to, to actually deploy into the atmosphere of EVE. We can think about that a little bit. But, uh, okay, 
we've got the basic idea now comrades also what we're going to do then if we have a look was it now this one that showed the map thing here now this one is not uh, key dates now I don't know again is this now the other version 1972 yes at any rate we'll be leaving Kerbin obviously meeting up with Eve on the other side there then fly past and uh, use Eve to throw us into a higher orbit and then eventually meet Kerbin somewhere there so basically just over one full orbit of the the Sun or Kerbal so that should be interesting comrades let's have a look at it oh yes just hold on the uh, thing I don't know this doesn't give us any information about solar panels power wait a minute power would probably be provided by solar panels similar to those used on Skylab yes so I'm gonna do the same thing that we saw in that orbiter example and attach the panels to the S4B that would make the most sense since they're living inside the thing anyway okay that's it comrades let's go comrades we are here welcome to the VAB and to the Admiral Design Bureau so this is of course our Saturn V final so we are ready to make some modifications to it although really we have to do very little the first stage will remain the same the second stage will remain the same it's only here where the landing module is that we have to start making changes so let's have a look at this just going to go in here and grab the decoupler oh, oh. no that's right that's what I want okay good so we've got rid of that thing now we know also the space that we have to put the uh, adapter the MM thing in here so let's do that let's see what could we use for that maybe I'll rebuild the fairings although let's leave them for now let's leave them for now now in this case we would like something to be actually usable since we can't live inside the S4B unfortunately so we could have one of the hitchhiker things where's the lab I'm thinking the lab might actually be better in this case we'll keep the American flag because that would be the appropriate one now um, there's a few things here I'm gonna have to take the thing apart a little bit unfortunately let's just get into this thing where's that plate Hmm. it's being a bit difficult that's the uh, airstream thing there it is engine plate that's of course the main attachment point so we just put the whole thing to the side now in this case we want two of the uh, landing the the landing stage rockets from the lunar module so we'll be taking this off we could also lose the uh, antenna there because that's not going to be good enough although I suppose we could keep that one maybe no get rid of it get rid of it so what's next what's next we'll keep the fuel and the monopropellant and all that in the uh, service module because we'll need that to make the correction burns on the way home now what will we use here well, let's have a look so two of these now in this case I think using an engine plate will be the best so let's do that just find the right point I think that's the right one and then obviously in a double configuration now they did say the big thing here was this does look quite strange I've never had this set up before but this is the engine that we used so it has to be that 
At any rate, they did say that the engine bell, or at least the most part of the engine, was inside the service module. So of course we will make that modification. And for that we just need to slightly move the thing up again. Not all the way, I want some of that to show, so that those pipes can still connect there. I think that will have to do. So that at least the whole nozzle is still outside, but I think I do need to move it a bit more towards the center just to avoid the clipping there. Good, now let's just have a look at the torque. It's zero, zero, so that's good. It is perfectly balanced there. That's very important. We just need to also make one uh, check here. Very, very important. I have to remove all of this now to see where the center of mass will be. You see it's a bit higher. Very important for our thrusters here. When we do the docking and hopefully not mess it up again. Okay, that's as close as I can get it. So let's throw the thing back on and uh, I have to rebuild the fairing otherwise I don't think it will actually deploy properly. Okay, so that will do. That's the service module. Now we get to the rocket thing again. So we just have to now attach that to that middle point there. Now unfortunately this engine plate also has an attachment, so it will decouple that or disable that. No, but it's still there. Okay, we'll just put it on the smallest node. There, no, that's not right. Oh, of course, it's because the engine is uh, shorter, so, hmm, might have to, uh, well, we could still make it longer here, so let's try that. Now, how did I attach this again? I don't believe it was uh, like this. Well, we still have an attachment point up there. And we can see it there, right in the middle. Okay, now do we have a good uh, scale here? No, this thing is definitely shorter still. But that's not a problem. We can still fit in here what we want, so I'm happy with that. Let's just rebuild the fairing then. Always a bit difficult if the thing doesn't actually reach there to guess now what the proper diameter would be. But that looks good. Okay. Now, what's the next thing? I do want the lab because obviously they're doing science and I want them to be able to see out of the windows. But the problem is, as we saw, the shape of this thing looks more like, like that. Now if I put the lab inside there, the windows will be blocked. So this is a problem. This is a problem. Now I suppose maybe they did not have other windows apart from the ones on the uh, command module, but I still want some. Hmm. Let's play around with this. Even, well, just want to see, just want to see. Now this does need to be rather accurate. Well, you can only do so much. That'll have to do. That will have to do. Then we throw this onto the main attachment and then this onto the other one. As long as one of the windows can be free, but I don't know if we actually get to use the other windows. I don't think so now. I think the only window we see is the middle one. That would be a pity now. <sighs> Hmm, 
Not sure how to handle this, I'll have to think about it for a minute, but first of course we can attach the solar panels. So in this case I'm going to put them... Should we put them now like this? I think so. This will have to be the biggest solar panels. Yes. Then, what's next? I think I want to move them in a little bit. So I'll just put them in line with this black stripe here on the top. Just like that, so they can still move freely, but at least they're not hanging off so far. Yes. Now they also said, of course, that they replace the batteries or the, the fuel cells with batteries. So we take this stuff off and we put batteries in the place. I'll have to move this down because it's only at that point where you can actually fit it in here nicely. If I try to put it on lower, it does this weird stuff there. Two batteries on either side will do, I think. You see there. Just undo that. Mm, now these things are sticking out the bottom. Okay, maybe not that far. We'll see this part, so I don't want to have it hang out that far. Just like that. There we go. Now, could I select this? Just want them to be roughly even. Mm, that will do. Then we... No, but there's a wall here, so I can't move the monopropellant down. Okay, there we go. That will do. That will do. Put the shroud back on. I just have to move out the thruster blocks again, because when you just place them on, they slightly clip into the service module, which I don't like, of course. Okay, there we go. So, uh, what's the next thing with this now? Comrades, I'm going to think about this for a second, so I'll see you in a minute. Comrades, I think at the end of the day it will just be easier to only use the lab here. I took the thing out onto the launch pad and I put a Kerbal in there just to see if we could actually see anything, but of course we could not with that adapter over the windows. So to make it practical for us, I'm just going to use this. At the end of the day, it's again that thing of, of, of making a trade-off, you know, between the appearance and the actual practicality of it. So, uh, I think here practicality has to win out. Hmm. I did put the docking port on the top already, so of course we just use another adapter here, and of course it fits perfectly there, so uh, that's actually a good thing that we don't use the big engine there, the SPS. Other than that, I haven't done anything else. Let me just think, what do we need? We actually want to have a look at the antenna business. I'm just going back to the diagram that we saw. Where on earth did I see that? Yeah, the cutaway. So it sits right there where the thing will dock. Okay, so on the side of this thing. Now, what antenna? I still, I know there's a mod that actually lets you see the range of these antennas because it's very difficult with gigameters to know exactly how far we need to, to go here. So that's 22 gigameters. What is that? I think if we look at this one, the 31 is 31,000 meters. No, 31,000 kilometers. Is that how it works again? I'm thinking so, yes. I might have to check this quickly, comrades. You know, I'm still not sure. I think what they mean there is million meters. So that's where that... Uh, if we just have a look at the lowest range there, the L1 DSN 31.6. Now, as far as I remember, that is enough in the career if you're still at the low level to, to reach the moon. So it's it should be that, 31,000. So that next one is 300,000. 
So what's a gigameter then? Million. Million meters. So that's 22 million meters. Let's go to the, uh, I'll just save again. I saved this as the Saturn V Venus. I just want to have a look at the orbit of Eve. Now, here we are, comrades. So if I select Kerbin and just get some information on it, it's, uh, hmm, equatorial radius. Where do I see the, the actual altitude of the orbit? There, 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 there. Kerbin, 13 million meters. So Kerbin is 13.3 million meters, or is that billion meters? That's billion meters. So is a gigameter then 13 billion meters? Because I remember from our historical sandbox series, which I still want to continue at some point, the uh, that antenna that we were looking at barely reached Eve, barely. And that was while the two planets were relatively close. So I'm thinking the gigameter is 13 billion Oh, it's billion then. So that's 13. So now Eve is 9.6 billion. So at their furthest, it's going to be 9.6 plus 13.3. So what is that? My math is letting me down. So 19 plus 13 plus, oh, good grief. That's 22.3. So let's say 23. 23 gigameters. That's what we need, comrades. So let's go back to the uh, VAB. Let's hope I'm right here. All right, so we saw 23. Now this gives us 22.4. So that is not quite enough. That's also the thing that we saw. That's right. So we need something a bit more powerful. That's 61. So this is more or less what we will need. I don't want to go to the max, the 158 gigameters. That's the uh, Voyager probe equivalent. 22.4. Let's try the Communitron HG55 because it deploys. It's actually quite useful then. Could it fit inside the fairing though? See, that's a good thing then it deploys like that. But now, how do we make it fold up properly? Not on the window. Hmm. We might have to put it on an angle like that. And then, of course, as far down as is necessary to uh, be covered by the fairing. It's again the practical side of it. I'm not going to put it over the flag though. Yes, that will work. Okay, so then it deploys and then it looks like that. Practicality. Yes, I think this will have to work. Now, again, they had the thing up here like this almost, but we can't fold it up like that. Hmm. Let me have a look again at the diagram. Yes, it sticks out all the way. It has like an extendable arm there. That would not work. Hmm. No, it will just have to be. Now, I do want us to do a spacewalk while we're near Eve as well. That would be very interesting. So, we want to at least keep one of the hatches completely clear here. Or we could just do it from the command module. I think that will have to do high gain. It folds up nicely there and that should give us the range that we want. Okay then, we'll use that. Let's just have a look again if I deploy it. That's just how the fairing goes. I can't put it in here somehow. That would simply not work. Then it's going to block the docking port. Even that's going to stick out. Mm. 
Hmm. Let me have a look at this. Just as long as the hinge is free there. Hmm. I'll think about this for a minute. Ah, comrades, I just had to put a cut in the video there. In actual fact, it's two days since I recorded uh, what I just said a few seconds ago. Uh, at any rate, I've added such a great deal of mods to this game now, specifically the Keto mod. I think it stands for Kerbin Extreme Texture Overall or something, so I'm very excited to show you that. I've also fast-forwarded time, so it is now the day of the window for the launch to Eve. So once we are done here, we can actually proceed with the launch. So comrades, I was thinking about this whole business here. I actually have the uh, web pages open again here. I'm just going to them. If we have a look here, there is a possibility of solving this problem of the dish here. However, it's going to require a bit of a shake up here, but I think that's okay. The one thing I just need to do now, okay, let me figure out how am I going to do this. I was also thinking about this whole issue here of the lab. You know, I think we should rather go for recreating the sort of look that the original had. Well, well, there was never an original, but you know, the plans for the actual mission. And that is more in line with this kind of a thing here. And then instead of a lab, I suppose we can put in a hitchhiker containment unit, even though now the windows will not be really working here, we can still see Eve through the windows of the command pod. Because when I'm looking back at that high detailed diagram, let me just find it, I can't see any option for windows here. And I suppose there were, you know, risks also of having windows that might, you know, get some kind of space debris impact or something of that nature. So it probably just was more structurally sensible not to really have windows on the S4B or that mission module in the interstage. I'm not sure. Again, there's no pictures of a real thing because there never was a real thing. And the diagrams just don't show that. So let me just have one more look here. No, I think we're just going to have to go with the plan now of actually using, because obviously the lab module is too big, so we'll use this, but then we'll also use one of these hitchhiker units. So that, of course, will have to simulate the living space that is inside the S4B, because again, I can't do a wet workshop kind of a thing. So let's just see, it seems to snap right there. This is actually good because I want to use this uh, adapter situation like that. That looks kind of nice, actually. So if I just see now, how do we make this a bit more manageable here? I don't want this stripe here. So let's move the whole thing down. Mm, we've got these handrails now. I suppose that's the best I can make it there. Let's just see if I move it up No. Like that, so the handrails are on the edge there. That's okay. Or should we rather move it for the handrails to be above that? Looks kind of weird clipping into the thing. Uh oh Just undoing here. Hmm. Let's leave it like this. The handrails are on top here now. Of course, they have no real function here, but... It looks better like this, like it was welded in place or something. So now, obviously, this solves the problem of the dish. However, there is one more thing. Now I'm going to have to find the plate again. Now, where is that? There. Hmm. Oh, good grief. Right there. Okay, move the whole thing away. I also figured out what the problem was with Scatterer. As I said before, whenever I have Scatterer installed now and I launch the Apollo, 
It always gives this kind of orange or purple sky and the whole ocean disappears and I found out why and it was quite a detective process through elimination. I kept taking parts away until I was left with the result that actually looked right again. And the real cause of that was because for some reason the service module was the root part. But it was never the root part when we built the craft. As far as I remember, we started with the command part. So how the service module there became the root part, I have no idea. But at any rate, for some reason, if the, the service module is the root part, scatterer bugs out completely. But if I reroute to the command part, then it works perfectly. So just shows you sometimes you have to be a detective when it comes to mods at any rate so that problem is solved and of course i will upload this for you into the dropbox again but if you are using scatter and you are also using the saturn 5 here and you run into that problem just be aware that's the issue just reroute it to the command part there at any rate let me just have a look here again there's that diagram that shows sort of the evolution of the uh, or the development stages of the Apollo Venus. And when it comes to having those two landing module engines, the bottom of the service module actually protrudes as if it has an adapter there instead of the engine plate. That will also help us to fit the dish in. And it is more accurate that way. The whole question is how do I do that though? Because this is sort of the right thing it goes from a two meter wider but it's too wide and it's too big as well this of course won't help because it is as wide as the service module really what i'm looking for although this is again too wide is something like that but then that sort of meets up with the bottom of the service module i'm thinking there's probably no easy way of doing this so either, well, if we use fairings, it's not going to work well. Oh, hold on. I just, I, I just solved it. Okay, there you saw problem solving in action, comrades. I just sorted it out. If we use one of the new engine plates. Okay, it is still going to be a bit too wide, though. Hmm, done. That's the only problem now, because I don't, I don't know, again, what would the real thing look like while it launched? No, okay, so if I look again at the development stages, the bottom of the service module is not as wide as the S4B. So it's definitely not going to be the three meter parts, or what is it again? 3.75 meters. But what I now was thinking is if we use a fairing two and a half meters and then I attach something like this, although maybe if we use the smaller one, the two and a half meter engine plate, is that this one? No. And I just flipped it around, of course, take the shroud away, make it as short as possible and then bring the fairing out. It's about like that. If we just look at it from the side, that is about the effect that I'm going for. More or less something like that. And uh, so if we do that, but then it can't go in fast enough. That's the problem. That's the problem. Because then we get this, and this is definitely not what I want. So what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Otherwise, we might just have to go with the plate that we had. This is again the practicality versus the appearance. There's no... I, I wish we had more adapter options because the ideal one would be this one just a little bit bigger, you know, two and a half meters and then 3.75 or even less. That would have been perfect. So tweak scale would actually be very useful in this case, but I won't use that. That's not right. That's definitely not right. 
I think at the end of the day this was the best option. I know it's now not going to have that full appearance but it's very much impossible actually to recreate using a fairing which is now what I would have to use because there is no part that fits that purpose. Uh, no. Hmm. This is way too big, I mean. That will never work. No, that's completely oversized. Now it's not looking like the service module anymore. Hmm. No. Don't think so. Hmm. Let me just try this one more time. Again, this is now not wide enough, but that's why we have the fairing. Uh -uh. We could leave the whole fairing out of it and just go... Or the adapter out of it. Just go like that and then in. And close it. But now this doesn't have the nice flat bottom section that I was looking for. Unless we just go with this. It's the closest that I can make it. Although I'm thinking this doesn't look quite right. It needs to be a bit further back. A bit longer than that. I would almost say like that. Mm. Now when we look at the size of this. Because it still has to be less than the 3.75. That might still be too big. Let's try making it a bit smaller. <coughs> Although it does sort of bulge out whenever I try to close it there. This is even bigger or is it just an illusion? Ah, oh, not the right thing I'm looking at. Where is that part now? This will do. I think this will do. At the end of the day, we have to uh, just settle on something, you know. I'll still use the engine plate because it's convenient now since the engines are there, but then I'll just move the engines out. We can imagine this is like a custom housing for the engines. They did say it was buried inside the attachment here. So I do not want that stage, though. And that is, of course, not stage either. So if we look at it like that, we sort of still see those pipes on the outside. So I, I think this is quite decent, although I might want to move it out a bit more. What are you doing? Now it's not cooperating. That's as far as I can take it. But of course, I'm not satisfied with that. So I'll have to take the plate out. Okay, it's not going to go any further. That'll do, because at least we see the whole engine housing. Yes, so keep in mind, comrades, this is the best I can do. You can have a look at the image. It's on the Wikipedia. It says the Venus flyby study mission phases. And it's the fourth one. I did show you that earlier. That shows it attaching there uh, onto the S4B and then having that MM, the mission module in the interstage. And then the engines of the S4 or, or the, the service module actually the, that section protrudes there. And that's definitely attached where the SPS would have been. So this is the correct placing for that. So now we're done with this, I think. Now let's just find the attachment point that we are looking for. Hmm, is that right? 
I suppose it is. We just have to rebuild the fairing now. But this will give us a wider base to put the dish in as well. Interesting what one part will actually lead to. This is all because of the dish. But that is something I should have done anyway. Now the dish again, if I look back at that big diagram, like I was saying earlier, it's attached to the side there, to sort of this edge right here. Now, if I simulate that like this, no, that's not quite right. It's almost like that. Now this still sticks out too much. And I think it would actually be better at the end of the day to attach it there somewhere. Why is it still angled like that? Now, just close it. Mm, not quite, not quite. But this is still one of those things, you know. What if, what, okay, let's think about this. At the end of the day, I want the fairings to just close in nicely to the top there. Although, it is actually there already. Let's let's build the thing and see. Now, of course, as per usual, I have to build a straight section on the bottom to start with. If this thing will let me now. Doesn't look like it wants that. It wants to snap to the part. Maybe I have to move this in a bit. Just to free the edge there. Good grief. Hmm. Well, it will allow that, but that will mean essentially it's a very straight fairing. That's not what I'm looking for. Hey, yeah, yeah. How do we solve this problem? Extend antenna. Well, that's what the engineering uh, teams are working on, I suppose. What the design bureau is meant for. Solving problems like this. Now that can work, but then I'll have to move it a bit down. I see now on the news uh, Mark Zuckerberg is being grilled by the politicians in Washington. It's actually on CNN now. Just a very interesting thing. But of course his answers are so polished there, you can tell. But that's the way the world goes, I guess. Don't really know where I was going with that. Oh well, just something I saw on TV. Maybe I should one day make a Facebook page for the channel or something like that. I see we're actually approaching the 500 subscriber mark, which is unfathomable to me, but very, very interesting and awesome news, of course. But uh, I'm thinking, what should I do for the 500? subscriber event. There should be an event, don't you agree? Okay, we can make this work, but I'm not going to have it clip into the docking port. We're going to have to put a octagonal strut onto this thing. Maybe onto that. Hmm. Yes. Oh, come on now, you won't go higher? Seriously? I wish they did this mission in real life. Obviously, it would have been an incredibly difficult one to send people on a Venus flyby. But I can only imagine the things we would have done since then, if that happened. Certainly, that would have pushed the boundaries of human endurance in space, but... Certainly, then, moving on to Mars would have been a very small step. Ah, well, one of those things. I'm seeing some things, uh, there's a channel called Curious Droid that I subscribe to, that uh, they had a, an episode on why the space shuttle was really just a big disaster in the end. It was supposed to make space cheap and affordable, well, the same thing there, but uh, accessible and all of that. In, in, in essence, it really just held back the progress of space for decades. Wondering and wondering. 
Well, I grew up with the space shuttle, so I was always a big fan of it, but hmm, one can't help but wonder. And, of course, it was not the safest craft. Ah, this is a problem. At the end of the day, this is just a fairing that I'm worrying about. But then again, that's what I do, isn't it? Let's move this down a bit. I want it even with that top section. So yes, yeah, speaking of space shuttles, I was looking back at some other games that I still had. Old save games. Where I actually also built a shuttle and the Buran. And actually the Buran worked much better than the space shuttle. Could take much more mass to orbit. That will be a very interesting I'm sure again a series when we do that on this channel. Very much looking forward to that. Oh, come on, I just want to get it centered here. It's not playing along today. Hmm. So it's... The result of that is I just ramble. Hmm. Well, we can work with that. I just want it to be logical that it's attached there to something. Then we'll just have to put a straight fairing up here. At the end of the day, the fairing is going to be dropped off very quickly. And this way, it's still not clipping into stuff. It's logical. As soon as we reach, you know, our orbit and we detach, then we will also deploy this antenna for the docking. But then again, oh, good grief, what am I doing? At the end of the day, we should just use a normal antenna. Because now I'm thinking, even though that's not even a thing in Kerbal Space Program, but if we wanted to minimize risks, and we launched and we couldn't deploy the antenna, the whole mission is a fail because we can't dock. The docking port is blocked. Get rid of it. I overthink, but maybe that's a good thing when it comes to spacecraft. Let's just use a smaller antenna. This one is actually a good one, but it's overkill. We're not looking for a 158 billion meter range. We're looking for a 23-ish. What's this one again? 61, so it's this one's equivalent. Hmm, we can work with this, perhaps. This is not quite the Voyager. But that's even going to protrude more. Oh, good grief. We could use a smaller antenna, but then we'll just have to be out of communication for a while. Could use this one and just make a cheap solution there. This one folds up nicely and it has a... No, it's not long enough. Hmm. How would we deal with this? That's why the, the foldable one is the best option. Let me think about this for another minute, comrades, otherwise I'm going to completely babble the whole time and uh, that will not uh, be a good thing, I think. Comrades, I'm thinking something like this might just be the best option. I know now we're going to end up just where we were again, because at the end of the day now, I, I realized again, this fairing section on the back of the service module, we can't actually attach another fairing to a fairing. So I can't just neatly complete that line there. We're going to have to go over that fairing, like somewhere there, to attach to the bottom of the service module. And in that case, we might as well just go straight up because we have to go around there anyway. So I think something like this might be the best. At least like this, it's not going to block the docking port. And uh, of course, once we're turned around the service module or the no the command module will fit in there very neatly so of course we just want to see that this doesn't block any windows but uh, i think this can work it's a solution not necessarily the best solution but it is a solution mm. although it would not be good to use a round or octagonal thing, then we should use a square one. Yay, yay, yay. 
a modular girder segment. How much does this weigh? Ooh, 125 kilos. That's definitely going to introduce a very slight misbalance or imbalance in the whole mass here. A misbalance. Where have you ever heard something like that? Hmm. Yeah, so that that uh, handrail there actually fits in between the bottom. Oh, come on. Bottom parts there. Hmm. That's nice. I like that. Okay, that's it. Comrades, we've sorted this problem. Let's not let it uh, detract us from the mission. It's a nice solution. I'm happy with it. But uh, now move on. So at that point there, I'm just going to build the thing straight now. Just to about there, I think. And then to the fairing section down there. Yep, that's it. That's it. That's it. So it's not going to look like the S, oh good grief, and this now, like the S4B that we knew before, the interstage, but that, that's because it's now the mission module, it's not the, the lunar lander anymore. So I'm, I'm, ex, you know, I find that acceptable there. So with that said, we just have to rebuild this now. Hmm. It does have a jagged edge there, but... If we just take it to the very edge, it's not so terrible. Okay, there we go. So that's fixed again. Let us just get another key here. So we're not using the two key anymore because we don't have the lander. So that can be to extend the antenna and the panels, of course. So comrades, we're ready for the launch. I think that's going to be it for this episode. We'll do the launch and then in orbit, obviously, we'll do our checks and all of that again because uh, we will just be in a parking orbit for a while. And after that, of course, we will do the injection to EVE. And I think that will probably be for the next episode. Then we do the whole journey in the next one. So this is the build and the next one is the execution. Although we are going to orbit though. So let me just think about the staging here. Is everything looking good as it should? Hmm. No, you're not supposed to be there. Let's just move it out of the way. So after that, the fairings will go again in four segments, I think. And it will detach with zero force. Then after that, of course, we'll do the transposition and docking. So the engines are put on that stage. Of course, we hope that we won't need to use the escape system. And then, of course, we have... Oh, wait a minute. The panels, we'll expose the panels again on the, uh, oh, should we though? Hmm, this is another kind of interesting thing. Probably we will. I suppose it might have some temperature regulation aspect or something, but we'll ditch the side panels on the service module again. And after that, of course, it's the standard story there. Let's just make sure the heat shield is good. This has to be max. Good thing I looked, I haven't done anything there. So 800, because we're going to be coming back with some alacrity there. And uh, we might burn up, so we have to be careful about that. So we'll keep the uh, 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 CSM together in one piece while we're on our way back in the final leg. And just use this possibly to slow us down a bit. I'll just... Um, is it necessary? Auto strut locked. Okay, so we don't need to worry there. Just want the auto strut thing to hold that together. So I'm going to save this again now. Hopefully everything is working here as it should in terms of the escape system and all of that. It has not been messed with at all, so it should be working. At any rate, now we're going to see the new mods here. And uh, it's really just the graphics mods. It's all the other usual stuff like Kerbal Clock and all of that. But the graphics thing, it's the keto thing. You can find it on Space Dock if you're interested. And uh, it does say you need some things like Scatterer and... What's the other thing? Distant Object Enhancement and... 
I also have Planet Shine installed, but it, it gives you all the instructions there, so you can follow that. Oh, and uh, Environmental Visual Enhancements, I think. That's also where I, I believe I got the higher resolution textures for the terrain. So anyway, that's it. Save. Pick the crew. So the crew for this mission will be... Now, I was wondering what Apollo would this have been? Obviously, it would not have been called Apollo something. It would prob probably have been Apollo Venus. But I think this is like at the point where they... 1973, they were doing the Skylab mission. So I guess, who knows, Apollo 20 or whatever the case might have been. But anyway, that's just a side note. So we're not going to send Jebel and Bob for this. We're going to take another crew. So Valentina, of course, and then uh, we need some scientists, I think. Linmon there is a good option. And Kelly. We could have taken the engineer. Should we take an engineer? Let's take an engineer as well. They need to make sure the systems are running. So we'll take Kelly and Hermes here. Let's just give them the other suits, the traditional ones. Then we'll also do a spacewalk when we're in the vicinity of Eve, so that will probably be Hermes or, well, Kelly as well, who knows. So probably Hermes though, to check all the systems and things from the outside if there's any damage. So save again and let's go to the launch pad. Is everything good though? Yes, should be. Final famous last words though. So, comrades, here we see the whole story. The, the sky looks so magnificent now, I have to say. At night, it's pitch, pitch, pitch black. We can't see anything, which is, again, very realistic, although not necessarily convenient, though. But, uh, yes, so we'll be launching. It also has a new sky box here. I, I also have a real plume, so that's why we have that roar of the engines. I'll speed up the launch because we've seen it before with the Saturn V, although this is a new one. But the first stage, just that roar of the engines, I'll leave that. So, comrades, let's hope for the best here. And, uh, of course, someone said I should do the countdown from 10, so I concur, comrade. So, in this case, we shall say F5 first. And 10, 9, 8, 7... Six, five, four, three, two, one. Warning, abort, abort, we have an abort, comrades. Cut the engines. Well, this leaves us in a bit of a drama, because that thing has again not detached, just like before. It seems we have to rebuild this whole segment every single time we make a change to the craft. So now we have a drama, because if we can't get that away, then we are going to crash. Uh, yeah, 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 I think we're just going to have to go the option of this was all a dream again. Let me just aim the camera here. I just need to see inside here, even though we know now for a fact the thing did not fire. There's the docking port, but there's no option to decouple the node here. Nor is there anything with a decoupler. No, this thing is a disaster again. Whoops. Oh, well. Simulation, comrades. Now it's the real deal again. Oh, good grief. This thing. Mm -mm. Everything was going perfect until this nonsense again. So what I have to do is I have to do that again. 
and also I have to rebuild the fairing again. For some reason it's just a thing, it just does that. It's the way the fairing attaches here or something. Of course if I look at zero again it's decouple and fire the engine. So I think it will work now. This was the same problem we had before. Ah. Life. Don't talk to me about life. But no, let's not get too dramatic. No. Uh, save again and this is the real deal, of course. But now I've already... No, it was a fake countdown, so I have to do it again. Forgive me, comrades. That does look impressive, though. And I think the fairing is not really a problem there. Obviously, it will look different to compared to Apollo, the normal moon missions. So, yes... Uh, all is ready again. Our crew is confident this time that things will work, and of course, I'll speed the whole thing up. But here we go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Okay, cut the engine there, 185 kilometer Apple apps. So uh, let's separate now. Uh, there we go. It was a perfect launch this time. So uh, good thing too. Hmm. But uh, I'm just so in love with this graphics overall thing. It, it looks fantastic. Absolutely spectacular. Look at that. I mean, come on, man. That's... F2 that. Okay, we still see the orbits and all that. But uh, stunning. So you see it's pitch black, of course, and we can't really make out many details here. That's the only drawback, that the map mode is not necessarily as accessible, but stunning, absolutely. So let's plan this thing out. I'd like to make it as circular as possible. Then, of course, we'll do the elliptical orbit in I think probably the next episode 186 186 that's good enough for government work I would say don't you agree leaving a lot of pauses there in my sentences uh, okay let's move towards the target can turn off the fine controls I do that when I begin the gravity turn it helps to stay on the 90 although Eve is slightly inclined am I now mistaken just look at the Sun there Kerbal and of course the sky box stunning good grief mm, yes slightly inclined but it should not be a problem Famous last words and all that. Uh, let's activate the engines so we can get a calculation here. 47 seconds. So fast forward. 23 and a half, of course. Okay, prepare yourselves. 3, 2, 1. Ignition. There's the North Star as well. They actually have a North Star now. Where is it? Of course, the brightness here prevents us from seeing it. There it is. I think. Yes, that's the one. Don't know if that's really a North Star, but that one looks like it is. So, yes. Very, very interesting. I still wish this mission happened successfully, of course. What was that? That's our second stage. 
Okay, main or second, third stage engine cut off in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Cut off at 0 0.2 meters per second difference. So we are, see that makes a difference actually. 86 by 86, F5 that again, and we are here, comrades. So I think that's quite enough for this episode. Uh, at least we're here and just look at this. I want to still build a station like the Mir station as well, especially with this graphics. Good grief. That would be these graphics, but anyway, sometimes have to correct myself there. But just look at this, man. Good grief. We even see like the, the, the reflection of the sun here. And also I've seen a, an eclipse on the moon as well, or like from the moon of Kerbin, where the moon casts a shadow on Kerbin. Stunning. Anyway, we'll leave our crew here for now, comrades. They will contemplate whether they are happy with what they've gotten themselves into, if they still look like they are. And uh, then in the next one, we will do the... Now, what comes next? I think at this point we do the elliptical burn, then we do the transposition and docking. That's right, because I read on the Wikipedia, I think, or oh, it was another page where it said that obviously that was done in case of an abort as well because the batteries on the service module, if they couldn't dock or something, would only last so long. So up to that point, we could do it an abort, but beyond that, it was here. Here, it's on Wikipedia. Unlike the Apollo lunar missions, the CSM would perform its transposition and docking maneuver with the S-4B stage before the burn to leave Earth, rather than after. This meant the astronauts would fly eyeballs out. That's the thing we saw earlier. The thrust of the engine pushing them out of their seats rather than into them. This was required because there was only a short window for an abort burn by the CSM to return to Earth after a failure in the S-4B. So all spacecraft systems needed to be operational and checked out before leaving the parking orbit around Earth to fly to Venus. So, yes, that's the thing. We will still do the uh, elliptical insertion like we are now. That was another thing I read somewhere. Oh well, that's the thing. We'll stick to that plan, comrades. So I will see you next time and uh, then we will do our big mission here. Let's just pass over the Terminator here. Just look at this. So stunning. I can't stop admiring this mod. Anyway, so that's it, comrades. Thank you for watching and for your support as always. And do let me know what you think we should do for 500 subscribers. That is not a milestone one takes lightly at all. We must take it with the due deference that it deserves. So thank you for watching again and have a safe landing.